Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to session seven of your citizenship class over the 2008 civics test. This is the final video for the series. Yay! I know you're probably sick of seeing my face by now, but you won't have to for very long. So these sessions, like I said, you know, have been going over the information on the civics test portion of the citizenship interview. If you're watching this video, you should have watched all the previous videos for the previous sessions and the review videos, okay? So this final session goes over citizenship rights and responsibilities. So make sure that you have the worksheet in front of you that says worksheet for session seven, okay? So I'm gonna turn my camera off and let's jump on in. But before we actually do the actual jumping into the new information, you might be wondering, what is the difference between a right and a responsibility? And that's a valid question. So let's go over the difference between the two. It's very important to know the difference as they both refer to different and important things that we must do as citizens. So a right is a freedom that is protected, such as the right to free speech or free religion. On the other hand, a responsibility is there duty or something you should do, such as voting or doing your homework? Like the homework I provide you. You all should be doing that homework. That's a responsibility of you guys. So a nice way to visualize this or see the difference between what rights and responsibilities is in this image of a scale. The rights of citizens are balanced by our responsibilities. And so right here, the rights of citizens are balanced by responsibilities. This means that our rights are only intact and protected when we act on our responsibilities of doing something. We must complete our responsibilities to keep our rights. All right, so now that we know the difference between right and a responsibility, let's talk about some rights and responsibility of everyone in the United States. So you may remember from session two that the first 10 amendments of the Constitution are known as the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights protects everyone's basic freedoms, including those, including non-citizens. So you who are taking this class, who's not a citizen, you are protected and you have these same rights under the Bill of Rights as me, who is a citizen and teaching this class, okay? So some of the freedoms protected by the Bill of Rights include freedom of expression, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion, and the right to bear arms. Okay, so we can now answer question one, which asks what are two rights of everyone living in the United States? There are multiple options that are underlined on this slide. You just need to know two of them. Write in the two that are the easiest for you to remember. Okay, so the Bill of Rights protects the rights of everyone in the United States. But now let's talk about some responsibilities of everyone in the United States, including those who are not citizens. So the first responsibility is registering for the selective service. And so all males between the ages of 18 and 25 must register with the select must register with the selective service system. And so this is the sign for the selective service system, okay? And so for male citizens, when they turn 18, they must register. And the selective service is also known as the draft. What this means is that if the situation ever occurs where we go to war and we are in need of more soldiers, males registered with the selective service are randomly chosen to go to war. It makes it more fair. If you are an immigrant male and you come to the United States when you are between the ages of 18 and 25, you must also register for the Selective Service. You have 30 days 
to register within arriving in the United States. So once you arrive in the United States, you have 30 days past that day to register for the Selective Service. So we can now answer question number two, which asks for the age at, with, at which men must register for the Selective Service. Go ahead and answer that question now. All right, another responsibility of all people is paying taxes. So in the United States, federal income tax is collected every year by the Internal Revenue Service, and they're also known as the IRS. The tax year each year is January 1st to December 31st. You must file a federal income tax return by April 15th each year or by the deadline following April 15th, if it falls on a weekend. Okay, so for 2020, you need to file your taxes for 2020 by April 15th, 2021. Okay, so you file the previous year's taxes by the next year's April 15th. So we can now answer question number three, which asks for the last day that you can send in your tax forms. Go ahead and answer that question now. Okay, so those were some rights and responsibilities of all people in the United States, even those who are non-citizens. But before we can talk about the rights and responsibilities of citizens, we need to talk about becoming loyal to the United States, which is deemed an important part of becoming a citizen. So when you become a citizen, you take what is called the citizenship oath. There are many promises you make when you take the oath about what you will do now that you are a citizen. So let's walk through the oath section by section to see what promises are being asked of you. So I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince potentate, potent state, or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen. So that's a lot of like mumbo jumbo. If you don't understand it, that's fine. All this part of the oath means is that you are promising to give up your loyalty to other countries. You are promising to be loyal only to the United States. So this next section, that I will support and defend the Constitution and all laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And so that part means that you will defend the Constitution. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. This means that you will obey the U.S. laws as set up by the Constitution, okay? That I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law. That I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law. And so this part here is saying that you will serve in the military if you are needed to. We make this promise by saying the oath and when you register with the Selective Service. So this part is talking directly about the draft, okay? And so then the rest of the oath is that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So the rest of this oath just talks more about serving the country if it's needed and making sure that you are the one taking this oath and that you are of sound mind, meaning that you understand what you are doing when you take this oath. So question four asks for one promise you make when you become a citizen. We talked about four. You give up your loyalty to other countries. You defend the Constitution. You obey the laws of the United States, and you serve in the military if needed. 
Any of these four promises are correct, but you just need one. Pick the one that is the easiest for you to remember and answer that for question number four. So in addition to the citizenship oath, we also show our loyalty to the United States through the Pledge of Allegiance. So let's say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I'll say a line and then I want you to repeat it after me. So I say, I pledge allegiance to the flag. And then you repeat. Let's do this for all the lines. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good. So, all together, the pledge reads, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, question five asks, what do we show loyalty to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? There are two possible answers. Go ahead and write whichever one is the easiest for you to remember. So now we move on to the rights and responsibilities of citizens only. These are the rights and responsibilities that you will have once you become United States citizens. So first up, we have citizen responsibilities. The duties or responsibilities of a United States citizen include paying taxes, serving on a jury, and register for the selective service. It is required by law that citizens do these things. Another responsibility of citizens is voting, although voting is not required. Question six asks for you to name one responsibility that is only for United States citizens. There are four listed here. You just need to know one, so pick whichever one is the easiest for you to remember. We now move on to the rights of United States citizens. Basic rights are guaranteed to everyone in the United States, even non-citizens, in the Constitution. Citizens, however, have additional rights. These additional rights for citizens are the right to vote in federal elections and the right to run for office. So question seven wants you to name one right that is only for United States citizens. There are two options underlined here on the slide. You just need one. Write whichever one is the easiest for you to remember. One of the most important rights that we have as citizens is the right to vote. And so a person is eligible to vote in federal elections if they are a United States citizen either by birth or naturalization, they meet, if you meet your state's residency requirements. So different states have different requirements about how long you need to live in the United States, in that state, to be able to vote. If you are 18 years old. And finally, if you are a registered voter. You must meet all four of these requirements in order to be eligible to vote. And so this is an image you may see around the election time. You have the sign saying, like, you can vote in here. And then they have people in there to help you vote, okay? And the process to vote is simple, and there is no cost. This is due to the 24th Amendment, if you remember from Session 6, 
where it says that we don't have to pay a poll tax anymore. Voting is now free. So question eight asks, how old do you have to be to vote for president? Go ahead and write in the answer for that question now. All right, so now that we know all about the different rights and responsibilities of citizens and non-citizens, let's learn about political parties and how you can participate in America and our democracy. So first up, we have the American political parties. A political party is a group of people with similar political views and interests that work together to influence elections and political decisions. Political parties have many roles and jobs that they do. Some of these include selecting and supporting candidates, encouraging people to participate and vote, and monitoring and reporting on political issues. Today's biggest parties are the Democrats and the Republicans. These parties are often associated with colors blue for the Democrats, and red for the Republicans, and also animal symbols, the donkey for the Democrat, and the elephant for the Republicans. Now you may also hear sometimes the Republican Party referred to as the GOP, and so the Republican Party does have this second name, the GOP, and that stands for Grand Old Party. You may remember from session four that we talked about how Donald Trump, who is the current president, is a Republican, but Joe Biden, who will become president in January, is a Democrat. So we're switching political parties come January, okay? So question nine asks for the name of the two major political parties in the United States. You do need to know both of them. So you need both the Democrats and the Republicans. So go ahead and write in that answer now. And finally, as a citizen, you can make a big difference in America. And we do this by participating in our system of democracy. Some things that you can do to be politically active are registering to vote, voting in every single election. So this means your local elections, your state elections, and the federal elections. Voting in primaries, joining a political party, and asking questions of candidates and elected officials. And finally, the last thing that you can do is that you can run for office. And so this picture over here, this is actually the form for Iowa voter registration. So when you guys become citizens, you know, I encourage you to register to vote so that you can participate and you'll fill out this form here so then you can successfully vote. All right, so question 10 asks for two ways that we can participate in our democracy. There are many options here but you just need to know two of them. Pick the one that is the easiest for you to remember. All right, so that's all the material. So now it's time to go through the worksheet and check to make sure that your answers are correct, okay? So question one asked, what are two rights of everyone living in the United States? Do we have the freedom of expression, speech, assembly, and religion, or the right to bear arms? You just need to know two of them, okay? Question two says, when must all men register for selective service? They must register between the ages of 18 and 25. And you can also very simply just say 18 for this question, and it is correct. Question three says, when is the last day you can send in your federal income tax forms? That is April 15th. Question four asks, for one promise you make when you become a United States citizen. 
And so we talked about the four. You give up your loyalty to other countries. You defend the Constitution. You obey the laws of the United States. And you serve in the military if needed. Question five. What do we show loyalty to when we say the Pledge of Allegiance? We say we pledge our loyalty to the flag or the United States of America. Either is correct. Question number six, what is one responsibility that is only for United States citizens? We have paying taxes, serving on a jury, registering for the selective service, and voting. Any of these are correct. You just need to know one. Question seven, name one right only for United States citizens. And so we have voting in federal elections and running for office. You just need to know one of these. Question 8 asks, how old do citizens have to be to vote for president? That is age 18. Question 9 asks, what are the two major political parties in the United States? That are, they are the Democrats and the Republicans. And question 10 asks, what are two ways that Americans can participate in their democracy? And so there were all of these answers that were on the slide, but I think the two easiest ones to remember are registering to vote and voting. And so you do need to know two of them. All right, guys? So make sure that the answers you have match the answers that I have on the screen and make sure you study them because I've said this before. These are the questions that you may be asked on in your citizenship interview. So you need to know all the answers, okay? So, what happens after the worksheet review? It's dictation practice. And this is the last one, you guys. So make sure you have the paper in front of you that says Session 7 Dictation Practice. And so you know the drill. I'll say a sentence, and after I say it, I want you to write what I say. So we're going to start with sentence number one. We pay taxes in April. We pay taxes in April. Okay, so here's what that sentence looks like. We pay taxes in April. Okay. Sentence two. Citizens have the right to run for office. Citizens have the right to run for office. And so here's sentence two, citizens have the right to run for office. And the final sentence, I want to be an American citizen. I want to be an American citizen. And so here's that sentence, I want to be an American citizen. So make sure that the sentences you wrote match the sentences that I put on the screen here. You know, if you're still struggling with di dictation, go back over this video, go back over the other videos in the other sessions. They all go over dictation. And you can even search YouTube for any more dictation practice videos. And dictation is a big part of the citizenship interview, and you will need to be able to write a sentence that you hear the interviewer say. And so if you're able to do this, what we're doing with this dictation practice, you will be able to pass the writing portion of the interview. Okay? So, I'm turning my camera back on now, guys. <laughs> While this is the last session that covers the civic test material, I still have some homework for you guys to complete. So I want you guys to practice writing out the eight sentences that you have been provided. Once you write them legibly so that someone can read them, practice reading them out loud. There is also a reading assignment, and this reading practice consists of eight sentences that I want you guys to practice reading through, okay? And if you've been able to get through the previous reading assignments in the homework, then I know you'll be able to do this with ease. I believe in you, and I know that you guys can do it, okay? So, 
as I said, this is the end of the civic test video series. However, you are not getting rid of me just quite yet. I know. I was excited too, but you got to stick around and I'm still here, guys. The next video series will explain how to fill out the application for citizenship and explain what will happen during the citizenship interview. I hope you guys watch those videos too, as they will contain important information that will help you pass your citizenship interview as easily as possible. Okay? And as always, if you have any questions, please call the Columbus Junction Public Library at 319-728-7972. Or if you prefer to email, you can email Mandy Grimm, the library director, at this email address. Or if you would prefer to come and talk to us in person, you can come into the library whenever we are open, and we would be happy and willing to answer any questions you may have about citizenship. So, happy homeworking, and congrats on making it through to the end of this session. I hope to see you all again soon in the next video series. Bye, guys.